Hello again folks, okay so what I've got for you today is something a little bit mm, unusual shall we say. Um, what these are, are kits that I picked up very cheaply from Hobbylink Japan. Um, well I ordered them at the start of the year in their sale. Um, and what these are, are some very old kits indeed. Well, relatively old. Uh, these date from the we've got 1979, 1980 and 81 respectively. And what they are, sorry, upside down, there we go. What these are, are a selection of kits from the Space Battleship Yamato series, which, uh, as you might think, I might expect, uh, first aired in the late 1970s and carried on. Uh, there were several series um, and movies, and uh, there was recently a, a reboot. Uh, which was Yamato 2199, which came out a couple of years ago, which was, uh, I think, reasonably reasonably well received. I haven't actually seen it yet myself, but uh, I'm a big fan of these original uh, the original series. Anyway, they are um, the work of a, a guy called uh, Leiji Matsumoto, who um, he's created a whole universe, really. There's uh, Space Battles of Yamato, uh, Captain Harlock, Queen Emeraldus, Galaxy Express 999, um, and various other... Um, sort of linked series and OVAs and everything. They're all part of the same universe basically. So what these are, these are model kits of various uh, vessels that appear in, this, in the series. So first of all we have the, this is the Andromeda class destroyer which is, um, it's basically a, a flagship from the, the Earth fleet. Um, it's actually a step up from the Amateur itself. It's bigger and more powerful and stuff. But uh, as a secondary role to play in the series. Then what we've got here is the uh, Cosmo Zero fighter, um, which is a, a space fighter that uh, appears in the series. And then the last one, this is the Cosmo Hound, which is um, a sort of a transport craft, really. It's, you know, inter-atmospheric, so it can land on planets and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take you through these kits briefly, give you a little overview, preview what they look like inside, and uh, give you some thoughts on them. So. We will start with the Andromeda. Um, as you can see, this is quite a small box. Um, so, you know, these are centimetre markings. Um, so you're about 15 centimetres, yeah. And uh, you'll notice there's no English at all really on these. There's Space Cruiser Yamato and all the little bits of text, but no actual English description. Um, these are, as far as I was aware, they were never sort of specifically released in the West. Um, so this sort of Japan market only. I mean, uh, Space Battleship Yamato was adapted for the Western release, and they renamed it Star Blazers. I think in the sort of early mid '80s. I don't really know much more about it than that, to be honest. Um, I know they changed a few things, which uh, I'm not not really in favour of, to be honest. But anyway, so this is the Andromeda. So as I say, it's quite a small box. So what you get inside is a bag full of bits. Um, Japanese stuff on there. I'm assuming that's the usual warnings about sharp edges and all that sort of thing. You'll notice there's no instructions in here because they are printed inside the lid. So this is a really quite a minimalist, uh, quite a minimalist packaging. This, which is which I quite like. You don't need you don't need uh, separate instruction sheets and that sort of thing. It's uh, that works just works quite well, I think. Um, Anyway, so as you can see, it's a fairly fairly straightforward build. You've got parts which you need to stick together um, in something like the order it suggests, and you, it comes with a little stand as well. You will notice um, that I'm sure will shock some people who are used to used to building, uh, you know, high grade, master grade Gundam kits and the like. This does not snap together. No, this is a kit that needs glue. And it will also need other tools as well, so you will need a scalpel or a hobby knife, you will need glue, you will need a file, you will, you will need sandpaper, you will need filler. So uh, if that scares you, it really shouldn't. It's not difficult, it's just a, a skill set that you have to learn if you want to want to build something like this. Anyway, so let's get into this and uh, we'll see what it looks like inside. So, one, one bag full of bits, there we go, nice and simple. 
So the parts count on this is pretty low. That is about it as far as it as far as it as far as it uh, as far as parts go. So you've got the main hull pieces there, nice and simple. Uh, a few little antennae. You've got all the gun turrets and things. That's the bow, which has got these two huge. I don't know if you're familiar with the Amato, but it's got a thing called a wave motion cannon, which is a, a massive super laser type thing, really. Anyway, this has two, as you can see, it's got two in the front there. Um, engine nozzle there, bridge parts, more little fins and bits and bobs. Um, missile tubes, I think, something like that. And then the last one, you've got more of these little fins. This is the stand, two part simple stand. And then those are kind of engine pod type things, I think. And you can see they're on the, on the bottom there. Right, so that's 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 basically it. It's, it's a quite a simple one. Not a huge number of parts. Um, so this is... I'm not going to say it's a beginner's kit because it's quite an old kit, so there may be um, various sort of fit issues and, and some uh, cleaning up and perhaps um, modifications that you might do to improve it overall but it's uh, it's quite a straightforward kit I mean if you've ever built you know like an airfix airfix spitfire or something you should have no trouble at all with something like this if you haven't then why not because they're great fun obviously slightly different genre but uh, it's still modeling basically you know people a lot of people are very uh, dismissive of other other sort of subsets of modelling, but uh, don't be, everything's good, it's all good fun, find something that you like the look of and have a go. Anyway, I shall stop preaching now. So that's the Andromeda. So next up we've got the Cosmo Zero. Now this is a, a, a fighter, as I mentioned earlier. Again, it's the same format, so you've got a little bag of bits, stuff on the bottom there. And instructions inside the lid. Again, this is a, a simple kit. There are not a huge number of parts. You've only got, well, you've got three sprues this time, same as before, but even fewer bits. So, what we have here, we have the uh, top half of the fuselage, the bottom half, you've got various fin details here. That's a tail fin. Little fuel tanks by the looks of it. That I think is the engine engine nozzle. And you've got some fairly basic looking landing gear parts there. That might be a good opportunity for those of you who have the have the skills or wish to develop them uh, to uh, perhaps scratch build some some more uh, well some more attractive bits than that because they're they're quite basic to be honest. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but. Uh, there's an opportunity there for those of you who uh, watch, wish to take it to, to improve this a bit. Uh, canopy is, is solid. There's no clear parts on this. Again, this is a this is a, a rather old kit. This one is 1980, I believe. Yes, 1980. So it's uh, not modern by any means. Um, I mean, if you were if you have the uh, the know-how and skills, you could make a clear one there. But then you'd have to build a cockpit and things, and that's. Uh, that's more of an undertaking than than many people may wish to take. I mean, you can paint that black or, or silver or something, and it'll look just fine. Again, you get a little stand there. Um, according to the instructions here, you can either build this in wheels up or wheels down mode. So you can put it on its on its own undercarriage, or you can have it gear up and then put it on the stand. So that's a nice little uh, option there. Um, the uh, the box car scheme is. Mm, it's reasonably bright. It's not uh, not super bright, but I mean, you can go to town on this. You can you can copy this. You can dull it down a bit, make it all drab and weather the hell out of it, or you can uh, you can uh, do a custom scheme. You know, I'm sure you could do all sorts of things with this. You could put camouflage on. You could you could do a tiger meat scheme, anything like that. Lots of options. Anyway, so that's the uh, Cosmo Zero. So last but not least, this is the Cosmo Hound. So as I said before, this is a uh, a transport vehicle. So it's uh, it's not armed as far as I'm aware. You've got again instructions in the lid. With a, a very simple construction process. Um, 
Again, a couple of frames of parts, not a lot. Nothing inside the base there other than the, the, uh, the Japanese, which I cannot read, so I can, might as well ignore that. So, as with the other two kits, very simple. You've got a, only three little sprues there. So we've got the top half of the fuselage and the wings. We've got some fins there. I think that looks like a nose cone, a little aerial, and some little blisters there. Lower fuselage, bits of the landing gear. Don't know what those are. Ah, no, they're wheels. So those are the wheels that go on the landing gear legs. So, uh, again, you can possibly improve those a little bit if you desired. Um, they're fairly basic, but no matter. And then we've got, again, this is some sort of uh, interesting looking engine nozzle. Got two parts for the stand. You've got these, which I think are the intake grills for the engine. Again, quite basic, so you could improve those if you wanted. And hatches, so landing gear doors and that sort of thing there. So again, quite simple. Uh, colour scheme is pretty drab, to be honest. Um, not very exciting. So you can, uh, again, do what you will with that. You can brighten it up, dull it down, use a, a, a realistic camo scheme or something like that if you, de if you desired. There are no markings in any of these kits, um, as you might have noticed. So there are no insignia or... Um, anything of the sort. So that might be a, an opportunity for that for those of you who are willing to uh, further customise it a little bit. Um, so you can use uh, transfers or water slides or dry rubber, whatever you want from other kits. Um, if you've built many kits at all you will probably have a, a reasonable sized stash of spares or alternative schemes that you haven't used, that sort of thing. Uh, so this is an opportunity to, to uh, Experiment a bit and, and do something, do something different. Anyway, so that's three kits there. They're uh, quite basic, as I said. Not the most uh, advanced or up to date. They're certainly not modern. I mean, these these kits are older than I am. Um, I think they're older than a good good percentage of the people who be watching this. And there we go. So that's the three um, Bandai. Space Battleship Geometry Kits. I hope you found that interesting. I do have another one that I want to show you. This is slightly different. Um, now what this is, this is one that uh, a fellow member here kindly uh, made available for me to buy off him. I don't know where he got it, but it's uh, one of these, I think it's more of a, a sort of a limited run kit. Um, and what this one is, Game of I'm afraid I've cut the top off already, so uh, I can't show you that, it just had a little a uh, little sort of header label on there. Not very exciting, it's similar to this really. Now what this is... Oh, excuse the distraction. This is a... Uh, this was re-released, re re I suspect, rather than this released for the first time, for the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the Amazon 2199 uh, movie that came out in 2012. Um, now what this is... I think, as far as I can tell, this is actually uh, a re-release of the the original kit, which is from the, the same sort of range as the, these other kits I've just showed you. But what this is, it's in a lovely, or rather hideous, depending on how you want to look at it, it's this clear, slightly blue plastic with sparkly bits in it. So it's... I'll be honest, it's, it's pretty nasty, it's not a nice finish. Um, and when you glue this, the transparency, it'll, it'll look even worse, it'll look hideous. So I intend to paint this, um, I'll just give it a... Once I've stuck it together, I'll give it a, a blast of, of grey primer and then it'll be pretty much the same as the others, really. Um, so what this is, it's, as I say, I, I'm pretty sure it's from the same line as those original kits because it's, uh, it's the same format, it's three tiny sprues the actual date, I don't know if you'll, if you'll be able to see this, but the date on here is actually Bandai 1979. So I, as I say, I'm fairly positive this is from the uh, the same range. It's just an updated re-release, if you will. Now that just gives you a, perhaps a better idea of the colours. It's, 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 it's really not pretty. It's 
see through slightly blue with the little sparkly bits in it. Um, and what it does come with, rather than in, on the underneath of the box, you get the, uh, the full set of instructions, with again the same bump that's on the box of the others, and again the same pretty simple construction sequence. This one's slightly different, you add all the superstructure and things to the deck, and then you build that, build, put that onto the, the hull afterwards. So again you've got two hull pieces, very straightforward. You've got the deck piece with all the little secondary turrets. And then you've got the, uh, the final sprue which has got the, um, I don't know, perhaps, perhaps you can see it better with this, you've got the stand, which is another nice touch, I like the fact that these come with stands. That's the uh, the base and the, the, the upright for the stand. Little fins, superstructure, bridge, lots of little aerials and bits and bobs, and then the main weaponry there. Um, so that's about it really. As I say, um, these were, I mean, I say I'll, I'll give him a shout out. It was Richard got, got, got made this available to me, so thank you to him for that. Um, and the other kits were not quite dirt cheap, but they were extremely cheap on uh, Hobby Link Japan. They were about... I can't remember exactly. I'm wanting to say they were about 250, 300 yen each, which is, you know, a couple of pounds at the most. I mean, the whole lot was... It was about, I think, it was, you know, the whole lot shipped was about six or seven pounds, I think it worked out as. It was ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, they're very cheap. I'm sure you can get them in other places as well. They'll pop up on eBay and all sorts. Um, Hobby Link Japan, Hobby Search, all those all those places. Um, they are, as, you, as you've seen, by no means state of the art. They're quite old fashioned kits. As I say, they're 35, 36, 37 years old. But what they do offer is a chance to experiment. As I say, they're very, very cheap, so they are um, prime fodder for practice, basically. You know, you can get one of these couple of pounds and basically you can ruin it. You can completely mess it up. You can experiment. You can try different techniques and it doesn't matter because they are so cheap. They are... I'm not going to say disposable because that's, that's, that's not the way I think about these things. You know, everything is there... Um, it's an opportunity. You can practice your skills, you can develop skills that you don't already have. Because um, all these really need is it's basic modelling skills. It's gluing, it's filling gaps, it's sanding, making sure things are smooth, making sure there's no holes, making sure everything lines up properly, and painting. And I know there's a, there's a lot of reluctance among the uh, the uh, shall we say the the, the Gundam mod model model collectors who have really been spoiled, shall we say the uh, you know the snap together kits that are pre-coloured. They're uh, they're really not. There's very little there to challenge you, is what I'm trying to say. I don't mean I don't mean to disparage people who are ha you know if you're happy to just snap things together, maybe use you know markers to panel like that's fine, that's great. If that's what makes you happy, if that's what's um, if that's what's fun for you, if that's as far as you want to go, that's fine. But things like this are a great opportunity to develop your skills. Um, on something cheap, so that if you do completely screw it up, it doesn't really matter because you've not wasted um, you know lots of money or lots of time or lots of materials on uh, on building something that you're not happy with because they are so cheap they're so you know a few pounds you know you you'll spend more you'll probably sp if you haven't got any already you'll probably spend more on buying paint than you will on buying the kit to, to finish one of these off um, but uh, Anyway, I think I'll wrap it up about there. I sh I'm just rambling now. Um, so, hope you found that interesting. Um, as I say, got these from Hobby Lunch Japan, but I'm sure they're available in uh, other places as well. I hope that's been of interest. I hope that's been uh, useful. Um, if you want to see more of any particular aspect of one of these, let me know. I will be building one of these, I'm not sure which yet, over the next month or so. Um, I'm just about to go on out, out on placement for my, uh, my degree, which is going to take an awful lot of my time. So all my uh, my myriad bigger projects are basically going on hold. So this 
Okay, apologies for that folks, uh, I ran out of time, my uh, camera will only record uh, 20 minutes at once, so I uh, just overrun at the end there. Basically all I was saying was, um, I'm going to be building one of these over the summer, well over the next couple of months, because I'm going out on placement. Uh, so my big projects are all put away at the minute, because um, this is something easy and straightforward that I can work on in uh, sort of little increments, you know I can do a little bit here, a little bit there and uh, it'll get done basically without a huge commitment of time. Anyway, uh, as I said, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any comments or questions or you'd like to see more on any specific aspect of one of these kits, um, then please let me know. Uh, send me a message, leave a message in the comments. Um, feedback in the Facebook group if you're a part of that. It's the uh, UK Gunpla Modelers um, on Facebook. Um, or any of the other groups that I'm involved with that I post, might post this to as well. Um, but as I say, yeah, let me know. Um, give it a like if you found it interesting and useful. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you again for watching.